Who is he? Who is she? Under normal circumstances, these questions are easily answered. However, when the identity of an individual, either living or dead, cannot be ascertained, they are immediately placed into one of two categories. The name should sound all too familiar to most. John or Jane Doe. The circumstances are often made all the more tragic by the fact that many of these John and Jane Doe's are the victims of homicide. A human life and identity prematurely snuffed out, often under mysterious or even violent circumstances. Every state in the Union can lay claim to their share of these unfortunate individuals. In that respect, the state of West Virginia is no exception. In Wetzel County, here in the small rural town of Littleton, the identity of one such Jane Doe has remained a frustrating mystery for nearly 35 years. Streets are empty if you don't count the abandoned automobiles. Only a few flakes still on, in the air from what turns out to be the second biggest snowstorm of the century. The streets are still littered with abandoned vehicles, cars and buses that weren't up to the blizzard of 83. Heavy artillery was out, but the plows and salt trucks were fighting a losing battle. On Friday, February 11th, 1983, a major winter storm rolled over the Ohio Valley and through north central West Virginia. All across the mid-Atlantic region, the biggest snowfall in 40 years brought life to a near standstill traffic accidents along many of the winding roadways that traverse Wetzel County were plentiful, and in Martinsburg, three people were found dead in their car on Interstate 81. Much of the East Coast and the upper Appalachian region was paralyzed. Although Wetzel County was not hit as hard as locations further east, many people chose to simply stay inside and out of harm's way. By the morning of Sunday, February 13th, the snowfall had abated. Residents, along with county and local officials, soon began the slow process of digging out. However, the calm and serenity that often accompany a blanketing of sterile white snow was not to be. Around 3.30 that afternoon, an elderly couple traveling along US Route 250 made a grim discovery. About a half mile north of the town of Littleton, the couple spotted the nude body of a female laying face down in the snow just over a small hillside. Although snow had been falling for the previous two days, there was no snow on top of the woman's body, indicating that it had not been in the area for long. The woman's body was found here, along US Route 250, just north of Littleton, West Virginia, about 40 miles to the south of Wheeling. U.S. Route 250 is the main thoroughfare between Fairmont and Wheeling, West Virginia. It traverses the northeastern section of Wetzel County, where the terrain is mountainous and wooded and the population often sparse. The couple who found the woman's body immediately notified the authorities, and troopers from the 100th Detachment of the West Virginia State Police responded to the scene. The preliminary examination of the body confirmed to troopers that the corpse had not been at the location for long, a matter of hours at the most. Troopers also were able to ascertain that the body had not been thrown from a passing car, but had been placed or dumped over the embankment, most likely in the late pre-dawn hours. Fresh tire tracks and footprints were observed in the snow around the body, though news reports at the time make no mention of any personal effects having been found. At the scene, troopers were able to estimate that the unidentified female was probably between 30 and 40 years of age, around five and a half feet tall, and weighing approximately 130 pounds. Although the body was completely nude, there were no visible or obvious indications of injury. Unable to make an identification of the woman locally, her body was sent to the West Virginia University Medical Center in Morgantown for an autopsy. 
Following the discovery of the body, witnesses reported to police that a man in his mid to late 40s was seen near the area where the remains were found. The unknown male was described as being Caucasian, approximately 5 foot 10 inches tall with a stocky build and weighing between 185 to 200 pounds. He was reportedly dressed in a short brown jacket. Witnesses saw the man standing next to a Chevrolet or Ford pickup truck, model year 1978 to 1980. The truck was described as being two-tone brown in color with a light-colored camper top. Given the vagueness of these descriptions, several witnesses were put under hypnosis by the West Virginia State Police in an effort to sharpen their recollections. Despite these efforts, no suspect in this case has ever been publicly named, and no sketch of the potential person of interest observed near the scene has ever been released. In Morgantown, the state medical examiner completed his autopsy of the body on February 17th. Again, no signs of physical injury or sexual assault could be found. The time of death was determined to have been 36 to 48 hours prior to the body's discovery, indicating that the woman had died elsewhere and been transported to the scene. The medical examiner was also able to rule out any troubles with the woman's heart, liver, kidneys, lungs, or brain. Toxicological tests revealed no drugs or other dangerous substances in the woman's system. With no outward signs of an injury or struggle, state police and the medical examiner ultimately determined that the most likely cause of death was suffocation. From the beginning, police suspected foul play in the woman's death. State Trooper F.M. Clark stated, quote, We are treating this as a homicide until we are informed differently, end quote. Unable to clearly identify a suspect or definite cause of death, state police focused their efforts on learning the identity of the Jane Doe. While mute on the cause of death, the autopsy of the woman's body yielded several possible clues to her identity. The state medical examiner determined that the unknown woman was approximately 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed about 135 pounds. She was estimated to be between 30 and 40 years of age. The woman had medium-length auburn hair, sometimes described as shoulder length, and her toenails had been painted with an orange nail polish. Her shoe size was listed as size 7 to 7 and a half. A single scar was noted on her index finger, and her ears had been double-pierced. The hair on her legs and under her arms had been clean-shaven, suggesting to police that she had at least some concern for personal hygiene. The autopsy also revealed a scar from a cesarean section, indicating that she had given birth to at least one child in her lifetime. Most importantly, a close examination of the woman's upper gums revealed that she had been fitted for a full upper plate of dentures within the previous eight weeks. Police viewed this as their most promising lead, and a laborious check was made with dental offices and laboratories throughout West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, but no match was ever found. Frustrated at the lack of progress, police took the unusual step of releasing a post-mortem photograph of the woman to the local media. Several artist sketches of the woman's face were also created. The first of these was drawn by Brook County, West Virginia Special Investigator Richard Volgamore and appeared in the Wetzel Chronicle on March 2, 1983. Over the years, two other sketches have been made and distributed. Despite the media attention and the best efforts of the state police, the identity of both the Jane Doe and her assailant remain a mystery. Over the last 34 years, several theories as to what took place have surfaced. The first of these theories came to light in 1985, when it was suggested that the unknown woman may have been a victim of the so-called Red-Headed Murders, a moniker given to a series of unsolved slayings across the eastern and southern United States. These killings are alleged to have occurred from 1978 until as late as 1992. In each of these killings, the victim had red or reddish-colored hair, and very few victims were ever identified. West Virginia State Police have investigated this possible lead, but no firm connections have ever been made. 
Another theory is that the woman's murder was in some way connected to the Hare Krishna religious sect. Recruiters to the Krishna sect were reported to be heavily active in the Wheeling and Pittsburgh areas around the time the body was found. The theory states that women who were recruited would be taken to the Krishna's West Virginia home in Moundsville, the site of the famous Palace of Gold known as New Vrindavan. According to rumors, many women who refused to cooperate or tried to leave the sect were eliminated. A member of the Krishna sect in Moundsville was convicted of the 1983 murder of another Krishna member, and several others were later convicted of or charged with sexual and physical abuse as well as copyright violation and insurance fraud. In 1986, Steve Bryant, another member of the New Vrindavan commune, claimed that prostitution and drug dealing were widespread among the Moundsville sect. New Vrindavan member Thomas Drescher was later charged with Bryant's killing in addition to the 1983 slayings. However, as was the case with the red-headed murders theory, no evidence or firm connection between the unidentified woman and the Krishna sect has ever been proven. The third theory goes that the unknown woman's death was simply another tragic case of occupational hazard. This theory came to light in 1993 when reports on the 10th anniversary of the body's discovery appeared in the local press and led to several new leads. The West Virginia State Police stated that the information they received indicated that the woman may have been a prostitute from Pittsburgh who either worked at or frequented a bar in or near Wheeling, West Virginia. The bar or tavern was never named, but the possible connections with either Wheeling or Pittsburgh have been confirmed by state police. West Virginia State Trooper William Henderson stated at that time that he felt certain the state police would one day be able to identify the woman. At the same time, then-Sergeant Danny Swiger stated that he hoped DNA samples from either the 1983 autopsy or an exhumation of the body could be used for comparisons with national databases. As of 2017, the DNA of this Jane Doe is on file and available for comparison at a university in Texas. The body of the Wetzel County Jane Doe remained at the medical examiner's office in Morgantown for 10 years. During that time, police and medical personnel developed a protective, almost paternal attachment to this Jane Doe. The staff at the examiner's office lovingly graced the unknown female with the name Judy. By 1993, state medical examiner James Frost decided that the time had come for the Jane Doe to be laid to rest. County officials, however, stated that they were unable to accommodate a burial for the woman. After reading a story about the situation in their local paper, a couple in Wetzel County decided to take action. Rather than allow the woman's remains to simply be cremated or consigned to a pauper's field, the Payton City couple took it upon themselves to adopt the woman. Out of their own pockets, Naomi and John Beatty purchased a concrete vault and a site in their family's own burial plot. In January 1994, the remains of the woman, now christened Judy Beatty Doe, were transported from Morgantown to Payton City for a formal service nearly 11 years belated. On January 19, 1994, a ceremony paid for by the Wetzel County Commission was held at the Beatty's burial plot. 27 members of this Ohio River community turned out for the burial and services of a woman whom they had never met and whose name they did not even know. Reverend Daniel Baker of the First Baptist Church of Payton City delivered a eulogy belated by nearly 11 years. Today, the remains of Jane Beatty Doe lay in the Payton Memorial Gardens beneath a simple marble and bronze marker donated by members of the Payton City American Legion. Inscribed upon it are these words, AKA Judy, 1983. You were unknown to us, but you are known and loved by God. 
The unknown female was found along U.S. Route 250 about one-half mile north of the small community of Littleton, West Virginia. The body was found on the early afternoon of Sunday, February 13, 1983, though the medical examiner later determined that she had died nearly two days prior. Her body was found in a state of complete undress. No signs of injury or sexual assault were evident. The woman was estimated to be between 30 and 40 years of age. She was around 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighed about 130 pounds. Her shoe size was between 7 and 7 and 1 half and her toenails had been painted orange. She had medium or shoulder length auburn hair. Unfortunately, her eye color could not be determined owing to the pooling of blood in her facial area. The hair under her arms and on her legs was clean shaven. A cesarean section indicated that she had given birth to at least one child and she had been fitted for a complete set of upper dentures within eight weeks of her death. Police believe the woman was not a local resident. They have stated that she may have worked at or frequented a bar in Wheeling, West Virginia. There was also speculation that she may have been from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area and could have been working the Wheeling area as a prostitute. Again, no suspect has ever been named in this case. The only person of interest was reportedly seen in the area hours before the body was discovered. He's described as a white male in his mid to late 40s, possibly driving a brown two-tone pickup, model year 1978 to 1980. However, state police have since advised that early reports on the vehicle's description were contradictory and that it may have had nothing at all to do with the body's discovery. Despite the frustrating lack of progress in this case, state police, as well as Judy's adopted mother, Naomi Beatty, are confident of a resolution. They are hopeful that someone will come forward with that one piece of information that will finally enable them to answer the simple yet agonizing question who is she? If you have any information which could possibly lead to the identity of the Wetzel County Jane Doe, please contact Corporal William Henderson at the Payton City Detachment of the West Virginia State Police, telephone number 304-455-0913. Once again, Corporal William Henderson at the Payton City Detachment of the West Virginia State Police, Telephone number 304-455-0913.